The movie begins at a house party. Frank Wheeler makes a concerted effort to glance at a girl named April, even though she's far away. She then sees Frank staring at her and approaches him. They introduce themselves and engage in a light chat before doing a dance together. Now some time has passed and they are both married together. Frank is watching his wife playing a part in a play while he is seated in the audience. He nevertheless applauds her despite the rest of the audience criticizes her for her performance. April is then seen sobbing in the dressing room holding her head. Frank approaches her to give her some relief, but she advises that they should turn down their neighbor's invitation to spend the night with them and return home. Frank tries to bring up the play on the way back home, but she shuts him down. He pulls over to the side of the road to try again to convince her, but it degenerates into a strident argument. The argument gets heated and April insults Frank about trying to be tough and manly. Frank makes a fist and looks like he's about to hit April, but he controls his urge to hit her and starts to pound the hood of their car instead, hurting his hand. April asks Frank to take her home. The following morning, as Frank is getting ready to go to work, Dressed in a gray suit and a hat, he drives to the station and takes the train into the city. The setting is suburban Connecticut in the 1950s. We now see April stopping to stare at the neighborhood as she's taking out the trash. A flashback crosses her mind about the time when she was sitting in the car with Frank while Mrs. Helen, their realtor, is driving. Throughout the drive, Mrs. Helen keeps mentioning how the two of them are so different from anyone else in the neighborhood. This is a recurring reference. People mentioning Frank and April Wheeler as the model couple of the town. They pulled up to a house that they eventually buys and we see how delighted April is with it. Flashback to the present day. Frank is within hundreds of other people heading to work. His face shows just how miserable he is with this everyday routine. Unhappy with the project, Frank's manager at work urges him to redo it. He approaches Maureen, who also works with Frank at his office. Frank takes her out to lunch while acting flirtatious and telling the manager she is preoccupied. Helen stops for coffee on the way to see April and brings a flower pot. She explains the reason for her visit when prompted. She requests that April and Frank should go to see her son John, who is now being treated for mental illness. John is a former mathematician who had several electric shocks and is under care due to mental problems. Helen departs with relief after April agrees. Frank informs a drunk Maureen that it is his 30th birthday. He also says that after his father passed away, he prayed not to continue working at Knox, but he ended up doing the same. While April searches through his old pictures of Paris, a memory of when she talked to Frank about visiting Paris and he promised to take her there flashes across her mind. The next scene shows Maureen lying in bed while Frank gets ready for work. He then leaves and comes home at night. He approaches the door, initially hesitant to enter, but April opens it herself. He is asked to wait as he retracts her inappropriate behavior. He enters and becomes emotional with the birthday preparation they made for him. Looking regretful, he took a shower. She discusses with him her intention to travel to Paris. She says that while he can start the job he wants, she will find employment in Europe and make money. Though he initially rejects it, she is able to persuade him. The following day, he cheerfully enters the office and makes the announcement that he is relocating to Paris. April completes the paperwork and they discuss the plan with their children at night. They also break the news to their friends Shep and Millie Campbell who are shocked but supportive as Frank and April are so serious and so convincing of how their lives in Paris would be. After letting go of her insecurity because of April, Millie breaks down in tears. Frank and April, on the other hand, chuckles at their response. They then discuss some of their life experiences as well as instances when they felt pleased with their lives. The following morning at work, Bart Pollock makes a call to Frank from the manager's office. He mocks him, making fun of the proposal he wrote. Helen arrives to meet Wheelers in the evening together with her husband and son John. After introducing himself to everyone, John begins to ask strange questions and becomes arrogant when his father stops him. He mentions Frank's occupation and laughs when he claims they are relocating to Paris. Frank chooses to accompany him on a stroll. There he is questioned by April about his occupation as a mathematician. He responds that after he has received 37 electric shocks, everything is gone. He admits during the conversation that he adores April. According to Frank, they are going to Paris because of the hopelessness of the situation. John says that few individuals truly understand the meaninglessness of existence. Wheelers are moved by this. According to April, John truly comprehends their motivation for existing. They mention that if living life on their own terms is crazy, they should go insane. To make a generous offer to Frank, Bart brings him to a restaurant. He claims he will make a good living by selling computers to American businessmen, which will change his career. To entice him, he offers double benefits. Frank responds that he has decided to quit the company in the fall for personal reasons. Bart provides him with arguments for accepting the deal. He draws the inference that this will serve as his father's memorial. Frank is now perplexed. He stays up late in the office working. 
As Maureen approaches him to offer her congratulations on his upcoming promotion, she says that his father will be proud of him. She offers to take him out for a congratulatory drink. April scolds her daughter over the weekend while packing the things. She sounds frustrated. Frank sees and approaches her. She initially lies but then admits that she is 10 weeks pregnant. Not happy about this, she clears that this should not stop them from doing what they want. They embrace one another after this. Frank discusses his promotion and the big sum of money they are offering with Millie and Shep at the beach. Implicitly, he acknowledges that the proposition is tempting him. April leaves while fuming. He claims that they can improve their lives here and travel with that much money. He wants to put off the thought of relocating to Paris. She again inquires about his desire to move to Paris while packing the items at night. He says he does, but she calls him out on lying. He leaves the room as the argument grows heated. There he discovers the abortion tube. They argue about it, each stating their own perspective. During the argument, she mentions that the reason they moved here was because of an unplanned pregnancy, and that she doesn't want to decide on another part of their lives for the same reason. She said she has no plans to use the kit for sure, but she got it just in case. He says that they should settle this issue and that having a child is not a punishment. Eventually, Frank helps her to relax and reassures her that everything will be okay. He is discouraged to see that their daughter and April are not friendly with one another. They argue some more and April understands that Paris is no longer an option. They declare their intention to remain in the country to everyone. Another night, Frank, April, Millie, and Shep go out dancing. Millie and Shep are happy that the Paris trip is not going to happen, everyone is happy except for April. Frank asks April to dance with him but April denies so he dances with Millie instead. While dancing, Millie feels ill, so Frank takes her home. April stays back in the bar with Shep and later started dancing with a lot of flirting and implications, which leads to them being intimate with each other. The following morning, Frank visits April to inquire about her feelings. She makes it abundantly plain that she doesn't want to speak about it. He continues speaking without stopping and admits to cheating on her in the past. She declares that she doesn't love him while appearing unconcerned. Helen and her family arrive for supper as the debate reaches a boiling point. Frank informs them that they would not be moving to Paris but rather becoming parents. John makes logical comments about the situation. He approaches him and claims that he is not a man and cannot comprehend the meaninglessness of existence. He punches the table and storms off after standing up furiously. John approaches April and tells her that she should make his life miserable because he feels bad for both of them. Frank exclaims that John is a lunatic and he should limit his opinions to the mental asylum. As Frank comes to beat him, Helen comes in between. After apologizing, they depart. April makes it clear that she despises Frank and will scream if he touches her. She yells at his touch, making him enraged. He enters the bedroom and hears the main door shut. He pursues April as she flees into the woods. April tells Frank to leave her alone and that she doesn't want to talk things out. She just wants to be alone to think it through. Frank complies and leaves her in the woods. Frank sits in a chair in the living room, drinking and worrying about April and her safety. But when she comes back, she didn't come inside and just kept smoking right outside the door while Frank stays in the house with the lights off. He discovers her in the kitchen the following morning. She grinned and asked if he wanted breakfast. They typically eat together after she makes the meal. As he has the meeting with Pollock, she wishes him well at work today. She continually asks him about his new job, saying he hasn't discussed it with her yet. He is reminded by her that they were silent about it. He illustrates for her and explains that it has to do with large computers. She appears to be aware of his upcoming work. He compliments her, says he enjoyed the breakfast and expresses gratitude. He wants to know for sure before he leaves if she hates him. She responds that she doesn't, straightens his tie, gives him a teary-eyed goodbye and departs. After crying, she phones Millie to inquire about the kids. After having an abortion in the restroom, she returns downstairs. We then see April gently walking down the stairs to the living room where she looks out the window. She suddenly started bleeding all over the carpet and quickly calls the ambulance. At the hospital, Frank is worried and crying while Shep comforts him. He talks about broken capillaries and other stuff the doctor told him that he couldn't understand. Shep leaves to get Frank some coffee and is seen crying at the vending machine. He returns to see Frank get news that April did not make it because she bled out too much before the ambulance got to her. The next scene shows Maureen and her husband relaxing in Millie and Shep's house. She learns through Millie that April passed away and that Frank now works for the Pollux Association and resides in the city with his children. She explains that Shep has seen him around the city a few times. Millie goes with Shep outside into the garden. She nods in agreement when he tells her that she shouldn't talk about wheelers. The following scene shows Frank relaxing in a park with his kids playing and swinging. When one of his kids calls him, he looks up and smiles softly, looking wistfully and a little happier. Helen informs her husband of the Revolutionary Road home's new owner. Her spouse silences his hearing aid and he looks into her eyes as she talks poorly of the wheelers. 
Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.